In less than an hour, the head of the FBI gets grilled on Capitol Hill. Director Comey is forced to explain immunity deals in the Clinton email scandal. So what should we all expect? South Carolina GOP Congressman Trey Gowdy will be interrogating James Comey on the stand, and he joins us now to weigh in. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. What can we expect today? What are you going to say? Well, I'm going to ask Director Comey, immunity from what? When you give five get-out-of-jail-free cards, most of us start looking for a jail. Um, and nobody went to jail. Right. So you're giving out immunity for what? For the destruction of evidence, for the possession of classified material? What was the immunity for? Well, in the, ca in the case of Cheryl Mills, he said yesterday, and I'm sure you watched all of it, and we'll get the transcripts. He said yesterday, I did it for Cheryl Mills because I wanted speed. I needed, she's going to take forever to get that laptop. I need that laptop quick to move the investigation along. We didn't have any susp suspicion that she did anything criminally uh, negligent. Well, you know, there, there is no Bureau of Prisons for laptops. Uh, <laughs> laptops, don't go to, laptops don't go to prison. People yeah. go. So uh, did you give the immunity to the laptop or did you give it to her? Uh, I think you gave it to her, and if so, for what? And, and when you talk about Cheryl Mills, one day she's a target, one day she's a witness, and then the next day she's sitting in Secretary Clinton's interview as a lawyer. And I am just tell you, as somebody that did this for a living, that is unprecedented. Yeah, you know, um, Congressman, on the other side, the people who are going to sit across from you in the room, the, the Democrats are saying, look, this is just a witch hunt. You know, we're 40-some uh, days before the election. You're just trying to make Hillary Clinton look bad. Well, it's not just Secretary Clinton. Uh, it is everyone in this case um, was not prosecuted. Not a single person was prosecuted. So my, my focus is not just on her. Uh, my focus is on the justice system. Uh, we can survive a president that's not all that good. We've done it in the past. What we can't survive is a justice system that people do not have confidence in. No one who sent classified information was prosecuted. No one who received it. No one who was part of the destruction of federal records. So this to me, and maybe I'm just a universe of one, is not about her. It is about a blindfolded woman holding right. a set of scales and whether or not you have confidence in the process. Now, Congressman, here's my question, though. Okay, so they want her laptop. They want Cheryl Mills' laptop, who's the lawyer for Hillary Clinton. Why don't they just get a quick search warrant? You can easily get that from a judge in a matter of minutes. Why don't they go into her house, get the laptop if they need it for the investigation? Why do they have to give her immunity? That's like saying, guess what? I'm going to give you immunity, but you have to hand over that laptop. In any other situation, this would never be the case. No, you would use a grand jury subpoena or a search warrant. Now, what Comey said yesterday was because she's a lawyer, then you have attorney-client privilege yep. issues. Uh, and there is some mm. merit to that. But that gets back to my original point. Uh, Cheryl Mills, I mean, uh, here's the moral of the story. Hire a lawyer to be your chief of staff, because then what you want to be made public can mm -hmm. be made public, and what you don't want to be made public, you can claim attorney-client privilege. Sweet deal. It is great. Wow. So, moral of the story: hire a lawyer to be your chief of staff. So we, so this thing, a weeks after the final verdict was handed out, and there'll be no indictment. But of course, James Comey's words were critical of Hillary Clinton. You have even more questions. What was dumped on you on Friday that raised even more questions? Was it just this five five people who have immunity, including Brian Pagliano, who was told by Cheryl Mills to start deleting the emails? Well, the date of the immunity agreements, which are pretty late in the investigation, that was something that some of us prosecutors took note of. But quite frankly, the fact that the FBI and the F stands for fidelity and then bravery and then integrity on a Friday afternoon when nobody is paying attention is going to release documents in a case that's really important to a lot of people. I expect that of the State Department. I do not expect that of the FBI. So if he wants to say we're doing this straight by the book, it is your typical Friday afternoon dump before you're coming next week that I expect much better of the FBI. And, and that's the same Cheryl Mills that stormed out of the FBI interview, correct? And was never asked those questions that got her angry enough to leave? Right. She stormed out because her lawyer, who used to work for the Department of Justice, by the way, and the DOJ lawyers had an agreement about what she would and would not be asked, and the FBI apparently was not part of that deal. So they, God forbid, asked a question that went into an area she didn't want it to go, so that's why she left. This whole thing would not happen to Cheryl Smith or Cheryl Jones. But it happened to Cheryl Mills, and that is my focus. Why are you treating this case differently than you would anyone else's? What's the answer to that, Congressman? 
<laughs> Politics, I guess, and a, and a Department of Justice that has been politicized. I mean, stop, keep in mind, the head of the Department of Justice met on a tarmac for 30 minutes. She claims to talk about golf and grandkids. There's not a guy in the world that's going to talk 30 minutes about their grandkids. <laughs> Maybe about golf. Maybe golf. Right. Maybe golf, but not their grandkids. Really? Right. Uh, that's disappointing. Uh, we also learned on Friday that she had a secret aide or an intern, confidential, a assistant. confidential assistant that worked for her. Monica was, Hanley. There's her picture right there. She's the one, you know, being circled there. She was the one that was told to go on eBay several times and buy these blackberries for Hillary Clinton because you can't really get a blackberry anymore. Even though, Congressman, she, remember, Hillary only was supposed to have one device. That's at least what she told told you guys. Yeah, well, she, to, she told the whole world she had one device, but she also told the whole world that she didn't send or receive classified information, that she returned all of her work products, and she was kind of iffy on who Sidney Blumenthal was. So most of what she said initially was demonstrably false. That's the next issue the FBI has to decide. Uh, you may can get away with lying right. to the public. That's not a crime, but you can't lie to Congress. Right. Maybe that ought to be reversed, but, but right now you can lie to the public, but you can't lie to Congress. Some of what she said, she said to Congress, and that matter has been referred to the, to the FBI also. This wow. is going to be a fantastic hearing. We're all going to tune in. Trey Gowdy, thank you very much. We know you got a busy day. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you all. Go Gamecocks. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Go Gamecocks. Yes, ma'am. Right, you are partisan in that way.